Chapter 52 Nick The gala was one day away and Noah and I hadn't spoken again. Was Worried, worried about her, about us, I felt a tightness in my chest that I couldn't. Let him work. That morning my father had stopped by my office, he had told me. Hand delivered the invitations for tomorrow and reminded me of what they had told us. Ordered from Noah and me about a month ago. I hated having to see her tomorrow after. Whole weeks without touching her or hugging her and now having to act as if we were not. Nothing, it was like everything was turning out to be a bad fucking joke. My bad. Humor was palpable in the air, anyone who came into contact with me was aware. Account and I had already had so many arguments with the staff that they had not fired me. The simple fact of having the last name Lista. I have rented three cars to take us tomorrow, one for Ella and me, another. For Noah and his friend and another for you and Sophia. My eyes automatically lifted from the paper I was reading. Distracted. What have you said? My father gave me a look that made it clear that I wasn't the only one who was. He had woken up on the wrong foot that morning. Aiken asked me, Nicholas, and I'm not going to have an argument about this, he's not going to. Able to attend tomorrow, Sophia will go on his behalf and ask me to come with the family. Does she even know? I said getting up and closing the door of a man's office. Bang. Sophia told me that she was not going to attend the gala, that she was leaving for Aspen tomorrow. In the morning. My father took off his glasses and pinched the bridge of his nose. That was before Riston had an important matter in Washington, right? They can stay and that's why they ask Sophia, if I'm not mistaken they told her this. Same morning, so the girl will have neither an invitation nor a companion. Riston has me. He asked me to go with you and obviously I said yes. I shook my head knowing how much trouble this was going to cause me. We will go in the same car, I have spare tickets, I will give you one but then we will go. Our account. My father looked at me indulgently. He was talking nonsense, if we appeared together. In the same car, it didn't matter if the invitations were individual, people would see us. Like we went together, and so did Noah. You're causing me problems with my girlfriend, I said through clenched teeth. My father sighed, heading for the door. Your relationship with Noah is already costing you enough son, if he is not able to bear. When you arrive at a party with a friend, I think you should rethink many things. I ignored his words and let him go. I couldn't let Noah get to the gala. And he saw me with Sophia, I had to tell him first. I looked at my phone and knew that she was like. If I called for this, the most likely thing is that she would even change her phone number. Two nights ago she had been vomiting until she dropped an all because she thought she was. I was going to go to New York without her, the worst thing I could do now is make her doubt more. About us. I got up grabbed the car keys and went straight to her apartment. I was lucky that just when I got to her apartment block she entered from the other. Entrance, parking her beat up car next to mine. Her eyes widened in surprise. Seeing me go down and I waited tensely for her next reaction. The last time she had seen her she had been almost unconscious. She approached me cautiously until she stopped and looked at me nervously. I'm glad to see that you're not drunk anymore. I said half seriously, half jokingly. Noah grimaced. I'm glad to see that you're still here and not in New York. She turned her back on me and climbed the steps that led to the front door of the apartments. Apartments. I cursed under my breath and followed her, ready to solve and settle this issue of. Once for all. I noticed the dress she was wearing and lingered on her curves as she opened the door. Door with a little difficulty. She had never seen that dress, it was yellow and. It actually looked like those dresses my sister wore, with little flowers on them. Everywhere. Why Noah made me want to burn him, I had no idea, but. I got nervous just watching her. She finally managed to open the door, I would have helped her but I was busy. Watching the swing of her little dress over her butt. Upon entering she turned around, pressing her lips tightly together. Stop looking at my ass, Nicholas Leister. 
I laughed and closed the door behind me. I looked around the apartment and listened to. To see if any sound could warn me of Briar's presence, but no sign of her. I like your dress, nothing more, I said, looking at her intensely, God hated that dress. He hated the way she clung to his chest and danced on her knees. Noah looked at me condescendingly and left the bag he was carrying on the counter. Kitchen. I approached there waiting for him to say something else. She looked nervous and that didn't bother me. I expected it. It was Noah, I knew her like the back of my hand. I watched her with amusement as he opened the refrigerator and took out two beers. Do you want? He asked me and I clearly saw how her cheeks colored, or maybe. Nervousness or maybe simply because I was literally eating it up with the eyes of her. Sure, I said, stretching out her arm and lightly brushing her fingers as I picked up the bottle. I was clearly aware of the shiver that little touch caused him but I did. As if I didn't realize anything. He was there to calm things down, to talk and explain about New York, even though the the truth is that all I could think about was putting my hands under that dress and make him really shudder. I lowered the bottle to the edge of the counter and with a sharp blow with my other hand. I opened the bottle and then put it to my lips. Noah stared at me, looked down at his bottle and for a few moments seemed a little lost. I smiled slightly. I took another swig from the bottle and walked over to her. Here, freckles, I said, handing him my beer and taking his to open it the same way. Manner. He was clearly aware that with that movement he had managed to shorten. Significantly the distance between the two. His lips hesitated but he lifted my bottle to his lips and let the cold. Liquid fell down her throat. I watched dumbfounded as her neck contracted slightly. To receive its content. Once again I was simply upset by the fact that he drank from the same bottle as me. I took a deep breath, trying not to shorten the space that separated us, something told me that. It wasn't time yet, at least not if he wanted to receive a pleasant response. Since I didn't know very well how to proceed, I opted for that well-known strategy and used worldwide by men, messing with girls. Your vomiting on Thursday was very pleasant. I think it's something I'll never forget, I said. Holding back a smile. Noah's eyes flashed with embarrassment and his mouth pursed into a pout. Indignation and embarrassment. No one asked you to stay. He left the bottle on the counter, I guess he didn't really feel like drinking anymore. Alcohol, and she crossed her arms looking at me indignantly. It was worth it just to be able to take off your clothes. Her eyes opened and then narrowed and released poisonous rays. She seemed to be. I was about to complain but she thought better of it, half smiled and looked at me that way. Diabolical so typical of her especially when it came to me. How sad that you have to resort to being half unconscious in order to. Undress, you're losing your mind, Nick. As he said this he stepped around me to get away from me and walked away from the kitchen. He would have pulled her to show her very slowly all the faculties that he still had. Had of her, especially when it came to driving her crazy, but I was having fun with this. Conversation. Noah walked over to the couch, she didn't seem quite sure what to do next and. She began to organize the magazines absent-mindedly. He leaned me against the counter and. I watched. He continued ordering meaningless things, and I remained silent. Hard a few minutes until he turned to me, left the magazines on the couch and tossed his hair. Back, exasperated. Stop looking at me. I laughed. How fun it was to deliberately bother her. You are leaving me without options, love, I can't touch you, I can't look at you, be you. Boyfriend is becoming quite a feat. She crossed her arms and looked at me, half irritated and nervous. Why have you come, Nicholas? I watched her for a few seconds. She separated us from the kitchen table and the little. Sofa that was between them and instead he felt her miles away, something that was not. I didn't like it at all. Why was he there? She simply missed her, and on top of that. I knew that my time with her before telling her about Sophia was limited. I turned my back on him and. I took a cigarette out of my back pocket. 
I didn't want to go into the reason for my presence there. I approached the stove in the small kitchen and bent down to light my cigarette. With the fire of the stove. I took a drag and turned back to her. She approached me and put out the fire that. Had left it on. I guess you just came to make me angry. Before she escaped from my side, I stretched out my arm to hold her close to me. It bothers you? What do you smoke? Yes, she answered rudely. Let him be here, I corrected her, lowering her tone of voice. Now that she had laid her hands on him. On top of it it was going to be difficult for me to remove them. One of my fingers began to caress her arm with. Careful. Noah finally looked at me, uncertainty present in every feature of his. I don't think he's ever seen her so lost. I took a step forward. She backed away slightly until her back collided. Against the counter. Why didn't you tell me? She then blurted out, her voice tinged with bitterness. Her question was not at all unexpected. She knew that what had bothered him most of all. The trick of New York had been that she had found out from third parties. Because it has never been in my plans to go anywhere, at least without you. She bit her lip nervously and she wanted to pull him down, but she didn't know if she was. Good idea to touch it, at least still. Then you would do it, if I were with you you would leave. It wasn't a question, and the truth is that she hadn't even asked me about it. I'm fine the way I am now, Noah, I like where I work and where it is. Directed my future. I wasn't particularly excited about inheriting my father's company, since. It meant working for him for countless more years, but that was a minor detail. Insignificant compared to what it was like to work for the Leaster Company. Noah's eyes searched mine and I tried to figure out what was going on. His little head. Aren't you even going to ask me? I frowned. Do you want to come with me to New York? No. So. I answered, releasing a sigh of frustration and tilting my head towards back. Women, God how difficult they could be at times, especially the one who had just. In front of. I don't want to leave, obviously, because I just started here, only a little more has happened. It's been a year since I left Canada, but, if it's that important to you, Nicholas. Well. I guess I would be willing to do it for you. I lowered my head slowly and focused on her again. Would you do that for me? I said, trying to see something that would tell me the opposite in his face. But she was being sincere, I knew it by the way she looked at me. Nicholas. I love you, she said in a whisper, even though we're not here right now. Very well, if you asked me, and it was important to you, I would say yes, I would go with you too. Anywhere and you know it. A wave of infinite love flooded the very center of my chest. That hole. What I had been feeling in the center of my soul those two weeks we had. Separated, damn, they had hurt. I took a step forward, totally invading his personal space. My hand. I placed it on her waist and I squeezed hard, almost pinching her side due to the hunger. Of her wanting to make her understand what he would make of her and what he would give to be with her and make her happy. Noah held his breath, and I think I could hear his heart racing. Then I guess I have to thank you, I whispered. I raised my other hand to his neck and brushed his hair back. I wanted to smell your of her fragrance, remembering that essence that only she seemed to possess. With the tip of my nose I brushed her chin and her neck, inhaling slowly and closing my mouth. The eyes later. I heard her breathing accelerate almost at the same time as mine. His hand. She clung to my arm, and I knew that just with my closeness her entire body had become. Jellied. I miss you, I said next to her ear. I love her that you want to come with me but I'm not going. To accept that job, not yet, I want to stay here and I know that you do too, and that is. Exactly what we're going to do, okay? I noticed how she nodded silently and then something caught my attention. I moved away a little. Of her and I put my fingers in her manet, leaving her ears exposed. Noah shifted uneasily. I had them done yesterday, with Jenna. Jenna. Whenever her name came out, 
it wasn't good at all. I looked at Noah's ears, those fleshy little lobes that he loved and adored. Nibble and kiss, which were now pierced and adorned by two small pearls. Of silver, two pearls that seemed to scream at me to keep my lips away from that place in. Particular, my particular place. You like them? I frowned knowing this had to have hurt him. Noah didn't need to have any holes to be more attractive. I raised my fingers and... I carefully caressed the two earrings. I like them. I said at the same time that I proceeded to take them off. I left them on the... worktop. But right now they prevent me from doing what I want. I didn't wait for her to say anything else, with one hand on the back of her neck I forced her to throw the... I pulled her neck back and placed my lips right in the crook of her neck. A broken moan. It escaped from between her lips. I lightly brushed the tip of my tongue against his collarbone. Until I go up to the lobe and bite it lightly with my teeth. Noah let out all the air he was holding and I noticed how my body reacted to. The answers of yours. I stood back from her for a few moments and looked at her carefully. The excitement and longing were so clear that I had to control myself not to. Devour it right there. Have you had enough time? I said pulling her lip down, preventing her from. Harm would be done. No, I do not know. I didn't like that answer, maybe I needed to remind him how much he had. Missed. I'm not going to do anything you don't want to do, love, I whispered, placing my hands on. Her waist, I'm going to go slowly, until you tell me to stop. She didn't say anything and I proceeded to lift her onto the counter in one quick motion. Carefully. I opened her legs and placed myself between them. I smiled to reassure her since she seemed to be too nervous for my liking. He understood that a lot had happened between them, and that he had not been up to the task. As a boyfriend, especially the last month, and that is why he had taken advantage of those two weeks to to try to understand her, to try to figure out what she had been doing wrong. I raised my hands to her face and caressed those freckles that drove me crazy. With my fingers. I traced the contour of her jaw, her full lips. She closed her eyes and it was right there where I placed my lips, softly, barely. Rubbing her. Noah had been becoming too much like me, and that wasn't right. My girl was. Sweet, tender, delicious, and also feisty, feisty and endowed with the most. Exasperating thing she had ever had to deal with in my life, but that was exactly what she. He loved her, all that and more. Have you missed me? I asked her, leaving my hands on her thighs and stroking them in circles with my thumbs. Noah's chest moved at a perceptible speed over the fabric of her dress. In any other time I would have already undressed her, I would have already taken her to her room and my hands would have already sneaked into all those places they adored. Now I wasn't going to make the same mistake again. He wouldn't go any further until she whatever she wanted, she had asked for time, she had asked for space, now it was up to Noah to do it. Disappear. More than you can imagine, she said, opening her eyes. She wanted to kiss her, more than anything in the world. I brought myself together in front of hers and listened to our breathing accelerated by the simple expectation. I want to kiss you. She looked back at me without saying anything. I will kiss you. Before she could say no to me, before she could change her mind and asking me for more time, I pressed my lips to his, strongly, with longing. Enjoy the pressure of my mouth on his, a unique connection that made everything disappear negative of my last days. I bit his lower lip and then caressed him with my tongue and pressed firmly again. His lips were the downfall of any man, and I was no exception. I uploaded my... I put my hand on the back of her neck and moved closer to her, forcing her to lean back and lean on my outstretched arm. My mouth separated for a second to claim his again a moment later. This once I put my tongue into the cavity of her mouth, and I looked desperately to find the hers. She did it, she came to meet me and her taste and response made her lose the little bit control that I had left. 
Without being able to do anything, my hands were all over her body, while she... I sat up from her and pushed me with her legs, drawing me towards her hungrily. Hers hers arms. They surrounded my neck and we merged in a passionate hug that could only have a single... Result. My hands moved down to the edges of her dress and up her thighs. Wrapping it around her hips. I separated from Noah and leaned down to kiss her legs, one by one I went up. His thighs, placing hot kisses careful not to leave any marks. Noah's hands pushed me away and forced my head up. His mouth was on mine again, and I breathed the same desperation of hers and the same eagerness of hers to want. Touch me. I carefully lifted her off the counter, held her legs and walked with her. Surrounding her hips until we reached her room. I closed the door and went straight to his bed. His hand caressed my hair and he clung with the other to my neck. I placed myself on top of her on the bed and raised her head. Happy little dress until you take it off over your head. I hate this dress you're wearing, I confessed, letting it fall haphazardly on the bed. It's new, she said, pulling the back of my neck down and burying her lips in my mouth. Neck. She bit and sucked on my neck and I pulled back with a grunt. It's terrifying. My tongue caressed her jaw and gently nibbled at the hollow of her throat. Noah laughed beneath me. Liar. I looked at her body, that body that seemed to have been designed for me, that body that. Only I had caressed, touched and kissed. I could spend hours looking at you, Noah, you are beautiful, in every sense of the world. Word. She didn't say anything, she simply watched me while she took off my hand with one hand. Shirt of hers and let me fall on her naked torso. She had a lace bra, so fine. It was like she wasn't wearing anything. I placed my lips on the transparent fabric and noticed how she tensed under my hands. Nick. She breathily pronounced my name and that encouraged me to continue. I carefully kissed her stomach, slowly, while with my fingers. He caressed her side, from top to bottom until he reached the crook of her knee and lifted her hand. Leg of her, forcing her to wrap around her hip. I placed myself at her height and moved my hips over. Hers hers. A wave of pleasure ran through both her and me. Too much time had passed. Then Noah moved, he pushed me until I was lying on my back and with a quick movement he straddled me. His blonde hair fell over his shoulder. And he tucked the strands that were bothering him behind his ear. I saw in his eyes that he was fighting an internal battle, and I hit the brakes. My hands rested on her legs and I watched her until she finally spoke. I think, it is not a good idea for us to continue, I feel that if we do it, we will throw overboard what we have tried to clarify these two weeks. He felt that the one speaking was not her, but rather the happy psychologist who treated her. She was he who had encouraged her to separate from me these weeks and see the reaction of her body to my caresses, seeing in her eyes how much she wanted to continue, it confirmed my assumptions. I sat up on her bed with her on top of her and put my face to hers. Do you want to stop? I asked him, a part of me wishing he would say no. Her eyes seemed to be deliberating. Her hand caressed my jaw, slowly in her. Her lips came down to kiss mine. I don't want to, but it's the best, at least for now. I took a deep breath, both breaths were agitated from the last kisses. I nodded. Giving him a kiss on the nose. Do you want me to leave? I saw something like fear cross her features. Do not stay. Her request seemed to be much more than that. I smiled sideways and lifted it until I put it. Standing next to the bed. Are you hungry? We had ordered sushi, and at that moment we were lying on the living room carpet. With a very bad movie that we had stopped paying attention to as soon as. She started. I had my back against the couch and Noah was sitting in front of me with her. Legs crossed and a mocking smile on his face. I don't believe you, she said, shrugging her shoulders. I raised my eyebrows and stood up. I stretched out my hand for her to take it. I'll show you, come. She stood up and waited for me to move the furniture a little to give her space. 
Then, I went straight to the music player and looked for the classic tune. The first thing that came out was a Frank Sinatra classic, Young at Heart. Perfect. Come closer, little suspicious one. Noah looked at me between amusement and doubt. I approached her, put my arm around her waist and intertwined my fingers with hers. His. I watched her for a few moments and then I started to move. I took it with me, just like that. They had taught me, just as she had done at least ten years ago. We moved slowly at first, until Noah finally caught him. I got the hang of it and was able to carry it with ease. I can't believe she's dancing with you, in the living room, and on top of that Frank Sinatra, what? Have you smoked, Nick? I smiled and forced her to separate from my body and then pulled her back to me. This time with her back pressed against my chest. I cradled her in my arms while we. We moved more and more slowly, her head resting on my shoulder while. I held her close to me, kissed the top of her head, and then turned her around again to face me. Forehead. I suddenly felt like at the beginning of our relationship, I don't know how to explain it. Noah was smiling, she seemed relaxed and I was a reflection of her mood. My bad mood. She had disappeared and I felt the urge to remember that moment, her in my arms. She moving next to me as if suddenly our problems had disappeared. After not seeing each other for days, the last memory I had of her being drunk and begging me not to go anywhere, she disappeared from my mind until she replaced him. For that moment, I ran my hand down her back and shook her tightly. I held the other one against me. Heart, our feet moving slowly, without touching each other, simply letting ourselves go. For the music. I love you, I said, feeling each of the letters, each of those two words. Noah didn't answer, he simply shook her hand harder, he kissed my shoulder. Center of my chest and so we continue. Moving until the song ended. We danced for a long time, actually hugging each other to the rhythm of the music. It wasn't until I felt all her weight fall on my chest that I understood that she was falling asleep. I put my arm under her knees and lifted her off the ground. What are you doing? She said half opening her eyes I want to continue dancing. I'm good at it. I smiled at the same time she opened the door to her room and closed it with my back slowly. She you're great at it, you freckle, especially when you can't stand up. I placed her on her bed and she turned a little until she opened her eyes and looked at me. I took off her t-shirt and her jeans, all without taking my eyes off her. You're staying, she said and an exquisitely sweet smile appeared on her lips. I'll stay, I answered, making my way through his sheets. We got inside her and she clung to me, resting her head on my chest. Now go to sleep, love. Chapter 53 Noah I felt like she was floating among white clouds in the middle of a sunset. I felt the warmth of the sun's rays on my body and that warm sensation of having rested so deeply that my mind found it difficult to make myself return to reality. It was warm, too, inside and out, that cold that was. Since the past few days seemed to have disappeared and when I was finally able to open I slowly, I understood why. Two light blue lanterns, beautiful and sensual, looked back at me. I felt the urgency. To close them, so much intensity without prior notice was not advisable for my already. Revolutionized hormones. Her hand, which was resting calmly on my back, began to trace circles. On my hot skin. How long have you been awake? A smile appeared on her pretty lips. It's been about an hour since you started snoring. I looked at him angrily, grabbed the pillow and threw it at his head. My movement was pathetic, since she was not yet fully awake. I rolled on the bed grunting and turning my back on him. Her body stuck to mine without. Wait not even a second and she pulled me towards her chest. She clasped our hands in front of my face and. I watched our linked fingers. I couldn't see him now but I was entertained by playing her fingers with mine. I miss you in my bed. I did it too, God, it was what I missed the most. It was incredible the things that could happen on a mattress in a room between. 
Two people who love each other, and I'm not just referring to sex, it was globally, the place of confessions, of caresses at midnight, the place of trust, the place where all complexes were left aside, at least when you were in love with. True. There was something magical about sleeping with someone and sharing the place of dreams. Although. I wouldn't have touched it tonight, I was sure my body and mind would have. They would have been calm knowing that he was nearby, they would have simply perceived it. I moved his hand to the side and saw his tattoo. I suddenly loved seeing those words on his skin. I really like them, because I had written them, I was the one who encouraged him to do those crazy things, because we were in love, madly in love. Last night when we danced and I felt his heart beating next to my ear, it was something so special that I was afraid it would end. I didn't want that moment to end, that's why. I held on until my eyes and my body lost the battle. The nick from last night. It had been the nick I had fallen in love with long ago, the nick I loved dearly. Craziness. It was in those moments when I understood that we were perfect for each other. Another, we were, if life had not dealt us so many blows, especially being so young. I wanted to think that we could put it behind us, that if we kept fighting, we would get this out. Go ahead, it's really what I wanted most in this world and I was willing to give everything. Whatever was necessary. But then, why couldn't I get it out of my head that what had happened? Last night as well as this intimate moment between the two of them this morning, it was the calm that preceded the storm. Nick forced my body to turn so he could get on top of me. You're very quiet. I wasn't serious about the snoring, you know you don't snore. I smiled and reached up to brush away a strand of hair that fell into her eyes. I really liked dancing with you last night. He gave me a smile, the smile that I loved and that he rarely let out. The light. I told you he was an excellent dancer. I rolled my eyes. Cocky should be your middle name, I said, turning away from him when he came down to. Kiss me. I laughed when he squeezed my ribs, making me jump. Tickle. I don't have a middle name, middle names are for softies. I have a middle name, Reddy. He hid his face in my neck and I noticed how he laughed at me at my expense. Noah Carrie Morgan, my mother, your mother must have been drunk. I pushed him with all my might, but he didn't move one bit. Cocoon, I said, giving up and leaving my entire body limp on the mattress. Then he fell silent, sat up and stared at me. I love all your names, Freckles. He kissed my cheek and freed me from his prison. When I no longer had it on me I could get out of bed he needed a shower. I grabbed the things I needed while Nick dressed next to me, watching me closely. Sideways he was suddenly quiet and I watched him curiously. Just when he was going to leave. From the room to walk me to the bathroom, he took me by the hand and pulled me while he. He sat on the edge of the bed. He grabbed me by the waist and raised his head to. Look at me for a few seconds. I have to tell you something and I don't want you to get angry. I frowned and eyed him suspiciously. I won't be able to go to tomorrow's gala alone. Okay, I guess that was the last thing he'd expected me to say. What do you mean? I was clearly aware how the tone of my voice had noticeably changed, that is. Plus the temperature of the room dropped a few degrees in an instant. Nick seemed to be weighing how to proceed with whatever he had to tell me, and... Meanwhile my mood changed by leaps and bounds. Please, Noah, I don't want this to be a problem because it really is a stupidity. I forced him to let go and crossed my arms. I watched him without blinking. I have to go with Sophia. And so, suddenly, we were back to the beginning. Anger took the place where calm had been, and jealousy destroyed everything. That I had thought I was moving forward in these two weeks, like this, without being able to do anything about it. My hands moved without even realizing it and gave him a push. I turned. With the clear intention of leaving the room, I didn't give a shit about being alone. Dressed in a t-shirt, I just wanted to get as far away from him as possible. He was faster than me because he held me with his arm around his waist, Noah, please, he said, 
holding me against his body and using that tired tone of voice with me. You can be letting go of me now, I said through clenched teeth. But instead he picked me up off the floor and threw me onto the mattress. I stirred but. He sat on top of my waist and held my hands with one of his. Don't even think about it. I shouted, trying to get away. Let go of me. Let me go, Nicholas. He held me down and looked at me with false calm, waiting for me to stop struggling. When I finally did it, not because it suddenly seemed like a good idea for my boyfriend went out with his partner's bitch, that perfect girl, dark, divine and intelligent, but rather because it was impossible to fight against his body. They have left me no choice, Noah, my father has put me between a rock and a hard place. I'm just going to be his companion, please, I don't understand where your jealousy comes from, really. I don't understand, how can you doubt me on this, after everything I told you? Yesterday. He wasn't even looking at him, he had his eyes fixed on the ceiling and my breathing. I was so accelerated that it seemed like I had run the marathon. I knew my jealousy was irrational, but she couldn't do anything about it, she didn't want him near her, let's say that. She was a kind of hunch or feminine insisted, she had more interest than that of just a friendship, but idiot Nick couldn't see it. His hand grabbed my chin and forced me to look at his face. Don't let this create more problems between the two of us. I wasn't going to explain to him how much this affected me, how much this. That my nervousness increased to unimaginable heights. I tried to calm down. I want you to leave. Noah. I looked at him, how upset he was, and I remembered how good we had been last night. Last night. Maybe this was the moment, as Michael had told me a thousand times. Where for once he had to act with his head and not with his heart. Do what you have to do, and when you're done, we'll talk. His body stopped putting pressure on mine and I shook myself off the bed. I picked up what I had dropped on the floor and before I could leave he stood between the door. Me too. Tomorrow, when all this is over, we are going to go away from here, for the weekend. Whole thing, let's go and get our things together, because you know as well as I do that we never. I would look at someone other than you. I let out a bitter laugh. Remember your words the next time you make trouble with me out of jealousy. He seemed to accept my answer. His hands grabbed my face and he looked into my eyes with a special shine. I love you and there is no other person but you in my thoughts. I closed my eyes, let him kiss me and when he left I went into the bathroom. When I heard the front door close I dropped to the floor and wrapped my arms around my knees. With the hands. All the joy she had felt when seeing him, all those sensations that had been. Suppressed during those two weeks had returned and in full force at that. He had come out of my bubble state to turn me into a walking bundle of nerves. At the disposal of a boy who seemed to know nothing. Okay maybe my jealousy. Were unfounded, but I couldn't help but hate Sophia Aiken with all my might. Tomorrow I was going to arrive hanging on my boyfriend's arm, and on top of that I had to act as if. It wasn't mine. I tried to turn a deaf ear to all those negative messages that came back to me. Torment me, all those messages that said she was better than me, older, serious. Elegant, rich, graceful, and beautiful. All those thoughts that she had worked so hard for. Those two weeks, all those things I had tried to ignore, tried to change to. Being able to feel better about myself, safer, braver. I couldn't go back to. Starting box, no, I wouldn't. That's why I put my instincts of revenge aside. Those who wanted me to call the most handsome guy I could find and invite him to meet me. Come along to make Nick jealous, but he wasn't going to do it, he had changed, he was going to be. Better yet, I was going to fight for my relationship with Nick. Now, one thing is for sure, he was going to be so ravishingly sexy that my idiot boyfriend. He was going to regret choosing that harpy over me all night. The morning of the gala I enjoyed the company of my friends, all of them, including Briar who. She was a bit like a fish out of water when she found herself surrounded by much younger girls. That she, that they didn't stop talking, laughing, and making that day much more. 
Fun than I expected. Jenna had sent for the woman who was in charge of doing her mother's and herself's hair all those times they had to go to events like these, and while we waited for him to arrive so we could do my hair, my apartment became a authentic beauty salon. We had a pedicure, a manicure, I shaved my entire body, I gave myself a bath with rose salt so that all my skin smelled wonderfully good and I I smeared the skin with almond oil that my mother had bought me a thousand years ago. Years and that on one occasion Nick told me that he made him want to lick me all over. The body. I smiled to myself looking in the mirror in my underwear, the sexiest outfit I had ever seen. I had been able to find, and I swore that after that gala I was going to give him the best night of his life. Life, the best one, was going to be so unforgettable that he was not going to look at another again in everything that happened to him. She was left alive. Is this the dress? Kate asked me as she took it down from the closet. I nodded as I looked at my phone. My mother had sent me a message. Informing me that a car would come to pick us up and take us to the farm where. The gala was celebrated. She was making me so nervous, I didn't know how she was supposed to. I had to act or what to do when it arrived, but I tried to put my fears aside and. I breathed a sigh of relief when Jenna's hairdresser showed up. Briar insisted that. She did her hair herself, since she was used to it, because of all those red carpets. Of how that her parents dragged her. I sat in a chair and let the quirky woman named Becca do my business. Hair a nice up though. She curled it all for me and she put it up in a bunch of braids. Spectacularly interwoven. I put up with all the hair pulling because I knew that. It was going to be incredible. An hour and a half later I smiled at the reflection in the mirror. I love it, I said, turning so I could see myself from all angles. Jenna took off the dress. And she handed it to me. I put it on carefully, admiring the delicious friction of the silk against. My skin and when I looked in the mirror I knew Nick was going to go crazy. I stopped for a few moments in front of my jewelry box. Most of the things that were there. They were bead bracelets that he had bought at thrift stores, or anklets. That he gave me in the summer, but there were two things that he kept with special care. He. Nick's heart pendant and his father's earrings. I picked up both things and looked at them. In silence, and that's when I had a small act of evil. Jenna entered the room at that moment. She was also nervous because there was. Met Lion to go to dinner. She looked at me with a smile and I tried to calm down. You're going to cause a sensation, she said, handing me the small bag that she carried where. I could only fit my cell phone and a lipstick. I gave him a quick hug. Fix things with Lion, Jen, he loves you. Don't forget it Jenna nodded and I went outside. Look for Briar. My roommate was wearing a nice beige dress, close to hers, flowing. Body of her, didn't leave much to the imagination. Her hair fell in pretty ringlets that she had. Collected to one side. She was beautiful. We quickly said goodbye to the girls and left for a rental car. Was waiting for us outside. I was surprised to see that the driver was not a stranger but Steve. Elegantly dressed to the nines. Seeing us go down the stairs she smiled at us and handed me a small box. From Nick, she said with a look of circumstance. I looked at the little box and the note that Steve handed me with a grim expression. Briar watched me curiously as I placed both items on the seat next to me. Without opening the envelope or the box. Don't you want to know that he bought you? I shook my head, looking at the road. Today I wasn't going to let myself be fooled, my boyfriend was with someone else and I was forced to contemplate it from a distance. I didn't even know how I was going to react when I saw him. If just thinking about it made my blood burn, I didn't even want to imagine what it would be like to have them in front of me. The farm was on the outskirts of the city, and the time it took us to get there. It only increased my nervousness. I watched in amazement as all the trees that indicated the way to the place of the party were illuminated with white lights. A line of limousines waited for the members of the cars could get off at the door of that white mansion. More than 
A mansion was a museum, in fact, if I was not mistaken, this place, apart from belonging to the historical heritage of the city, it was used for a wide variety of events, including art exhibitions of all kinds. I watched with a knot in my stomach as the people who were getting off passed by along a kind of red carpet until reaching a photo call where a large number of photographers were in charge of taking photos for who knows what magazines. Is it mandatory to take those photos? I asked, feeling the first signs of a full-blown panic attack. Briar looked at me like she had lost her mind. Don't be stupid, Noah, we will appear in all the newspapers and magazines in the city. Steve. I said in a strangled voice. Steve watched me in the rearview mirror and the look in his eyes was enough for me to know that he wasn't going to. To be able to get rid of this. All the time he had spent putting me overly. Pretty didn't seem enough to me anymore, all the money he had spent on that stupid. Dress seemed ridiculous to me when we approached the mansion and my eyes saw what. Excessively elegant that the women were. I looked at my knees, and I stared at my hands. I had had a manicure, and my nails shined, long and painted and elegant. Pearl color. I can do it, I thought to myself. I can do it. No matter how many times I had repeated those words, nothing would have prepared me for what. I was waiting that night. Absolutely nothing. When the car stopped, I didn't have much time to think further. A man. Suit opened the door for us and I had to swallow all my insecurities. They helped me. Go down and at least 30 pairs of eyes were fixed on me. Good evening, ladies, the man in a suit told us and I watched him touch his hand. Earpiece that he had in his ear and whispered something that I couldn't hear. My mother had told me that she should not stop me to take photos until she found me. With her and William and when that man told me to follow him I had to turn towards. Briar. I'm not going to miss this, he said, watching the photo call with almost interest. Calculating. Are you sure you don't mind being alone? Briar rolled her eyes and turned her back on me. His elegant legs began to. I walked towards the crowd of people and I knew I didn't have to worry about her. The guy in a suit motioned for me to follow him and as he walked down the elegant. Carpet facing away from the photographers, I heard how many of these. They called by my name. We got to the part where a bunch of reporters were interviewing a large number of. People, I felt overwhelmed with so many people until my eyes met my. Mother. She was surrounded by two bodyguards and a woman who seemed to be totally stressed. My mother seemed to relax when she saw me. We had not seen each other. Since the night I left her house, a month ago, and although time had passed. Enough to have put the problems aside, when I saw her, I knew that I was still. There was a lot to talk about between the two of us. You look beautiful, Noah, she told me when she saw me and leaned over to give me a quick hug. My mother looked like a movie star, they had curled her hair and tied it up. With a beautiful silver and diamond pin. Her dress was burgundy and she made her. Seem much younger than she really was. The way she always preserves me. She was amazed, because it's not that my mother was a big fan of strict diets or. Nothing like it. Thank you, you too, I said, looking away and seeing William in the corner. Speaking with some reporters from the Los Angeles Times magazine. Many of those present were important businessmen who basically. They held that city. I didn't even want to imagine the empires they led, but. It was enough to look at their clothes and at all those vase women who were waiting. Patiently for the men to finish speaking. From my place, a little behind but still facing the public, I could see how. The other cars continued to arrive, letting their elegantly dressed occupants alight. My mother next to me was chatting in a high tone with the people who were passing by her. She was all crazy, and she was starting to overwhelm me. I was being introduced to more. People I could remember and we had to wait for William to finish talking. With all the reporters so we can take the damn family photos. A commotion among the photographers made me focus my eyes on the car that had just stopped. Next to the carpet. 
The door opened and my heart stopped for a few moments. There he was, and oh my goodness, not to go crazy. Nicholas stepped out of the limo, his expression serious and professional despite the shouts of the photographers. He fastened the button on his jacket and held out his hand to the girl who was walking with him in the car. Sophia Aiken walked out the door, dressed in a spectacular dress. Black, tight and incredibly sexy. I watched them from a distance, feeling a sudden urge to vomit. I looked away and focused on the opposite point. My mother looked at me and quickly looked away. I allowed myself to take a look. Fast and I regretted it immediately. Nick was posing with her, in front of the photo call with his hand resting on her. Tiny waist of his, they both looked like real movie stars. At that moment William separated from the journalists and came to greet me. Everything must be. To say it, Wool was beaming with happiness, I guess this was his night, so much thinking about. I myself had not realized how important all this was to him. Thank you for doing this, Noah, you look beautiful, he told me smiling. I nodded, ignoring the anger that was beginning to take over me in leaps and bounds. One more glance was enough for me to see Nick saying something to Sophia before turning and heading towards us. When our eyes met, I literally felt as if in my stomach. There were hundreds of butterflies fluttering incessantly, although more than butterflies they seemed. Be cockroaches, because he felt a jealousy that threatened to ruin that whole facade. Of a ten-year-old girl who wanted to appear. Nick's eyes widened when he saw me in the distance with with my mother and her father. They were talking about something that didn't interest me at all. While I literally ogled my asshole boyfriend. Damn. Nick in a tuxedo. Before he could do something crazy, I turned my back on him and stared at the impressive gardens, in the lights and in the journalists, was that the well-known TV presenter? And that wasn't the actor they had hired for the movie. New from Spielberg? I felt the warmth of her a few minutes later, so much so that my whole body shivered. At the simple touch of his jacket against the back of my back. I had Will and I. Mother right in front of her and her eyes strayed to the newcomer. Hello, son, Will greeted him absent-mindedly as the woman approached to tell him. Some things. My mother smiled tight and turned to the woman who told them. She explained how they were going to proceed with the photographs. I continued with my gaze fixed on the gardens. Without saying anything at all, one of his fingers caressed me from her shoulder to her. Doll in a very subtle but incredibly tempting way. I turned towards him with the intention of warning him with my eyes that, as best I could. What to do that night was to leave me alone, no friction, no glances, no kisses, no anything that happened to him. It would seem. She was so angry that she was afraid of forgetting where she was and who she was with and. I had to give him a hard time, but all my warnings got stuck in the. Throat when I turned and saw him up close, there, in front of me, imposing as he was. His mouth said nothing but his look said it all. I felt like he was watching me. Undressing in less than five seconds, as if simply with the glance of his eyes. Through my body I could feel the touch of his fingers on my skin, the caress of his lips. Moist and delicious in every naked corner of my body. God, stop, stop, don't think about that now. I was clearly aware of how many were watching us, wanting to see how we were doing. Behaved, it was clear that we attracted attention and even more so the damn gigolo that was in front of me. Without saying a word she leaned in and he kissed my cheek. I closed my eyes for a moment and breathed in the familiar smell of his fragrance, which mingled very subtly with that of tobacco smoke. Had he been smoking because he was as nervous as I was? Oh, love, why are you doing this to me? He whispered next to my ear before moving away and doing as if nothing had happened. He went around me to get closer to the journalists. I stood there, stunned and then. Follow him with your eyes. He began to answer many of the questions that began to arise. To him and I stayed watching him from a distance. The way he moves, engages. Conversation with all those who wanted to know about the Leaster's son, the safety in. 
each of his movements. He stepped away from the journalists for a few moments to look at something on his cell phone. Automatically my cell phone vibrated in my bag. Nick had already put away his phone and was already answering more questions, his father. He had approached him and now many cameras focused on the two of them. I lowered my eyes to the phone screen. I'm going to take off that dress so slowly, today is going to be the longest and pleasure of your life. A totally inopportune heat ran through me from my feet until it gathered right in my cheeks. I looked both ways hoping that no one would notice how much their words and his mere presence had affected my system. I typed a quick response before approaching my mother, who was waiting. We waited patiently for Will and Nick to finish so we could take our family photos. People was already entering, and even though the cars continued to arrive, the weather was threatening. With ruining our night, some dark clouds were approaching at full speed from the coast and, although a common saying claimed that it never rained in the city of Los Angeles, it, it is more likely that today it rained for the first time since I arrived here. The woman with the earpiece told me to come closer and my mother and I positioned ourselves in front of the photo call to take photos of the two of us alone. It didn't take more than a few minutes until Will and Nick joined us. To my relief. Will stood next to me and Nick stood next to my mother, they took a few photos of us and then. They asked us not to separate. It was a photographer who insisted on the others that Nick and I posed together. I didn't want to do it, I didn't want any pictures pretending to be stepbrothers, I didn't want a. I remember that night, period. I looked at Nick, who seemed calm despite the whole situation, and approached him. So they could take some photos of us. A few meters away, my mother and Will were posing. Together. Nick put his hand around my waist and pulled me close in a perhaps. Too possessive for the occasion. I smiled as best I could, noticing a tingle where his fingers clung to her. My skin. I didn't like your response to my message, he said just so I could hear him. I smiled more broadly looking forward. Well, I'm not surprised. I answered after letting them photograph us for a few. How many minutes? I turned to approach my mother and get away from him but her hand. He kept where he was, and held me close to his side. I cursed inwardly. Did you like my gift? He asked me, walking next to me until he left the journalists behind. I needed to get away from him, I wouldn't survive that night if he clung to me like he was doing, I couldn't pretend that we were nothing, that his presence didn't overwhelm me, that. She was furious at having to share him and above all she wanted to throw me into his arms and show the world that he was mine. What gift? I said, playing dumb just as we entered the door. The door. They had cleared the entire room and people were crowding there, while the waiters served glasses of champagne and appetizers on pretty glass trays. If I looked closely, there was glass everywhere, and candles, yes, hundreds of candles and dim lights. And white that invited you to join in, chat and spend an unforgettable evening. My response made his frustration and apparent calm go away. He. He stood in front of me and stared at me, trying to figure out, I think, how to proceed. With me, or rather, how to move forward with that situation where if not. If we had to pretend, his lips would have already rested on mine like in the rest of us parts of the body indecently correct for a public place. I was grateful that he let go of my waist, but having him in front of him meant that I couldn't divert your gaze towards the people, the room, or the windows that overlook the immersed gardens. All he saw now was Nick. The air got stuck in my throat. I told Steve to give it to you as soon as he saw you, a little box with a note I knew what. He was obviously talking, that's why my brain stopped paying attention to him, basically because I didn't. I couldn't take my eyes off his face, his body, how incredibly handsome, mother, no. Not only handsome, but inhumanly perfect. How could his eyes be even more? Blue that night? His hair, so dark, and unruly. Nick was one of the few boys who 
They refused to spend more than two minutes in front of the mirror, in fact, I was imagining it. Right at that moment, running her hands desperately, trying to comb her hair but achieving the opposite effect. God, I was ogling him, I was suffering from extreme days. We hadn't really been together for so many days that I could only think about what it would be like. Taking off that shirt, that jacket, the stupid bow tie, which only managed to give him an air of even sexier. Noah, are you listening to me? He said, bending down to fix his eyes on mine. Oh Nick, if you knew what I was thinking about Dot. Of course I listen to you, and I don't want gifts Nicholas, I want to end this night and forget that you have come with another woman. He released the breath he was holding slowly and gently, then raised his head. Hand of him, with the clear intention of caressing me, until he realized that he couldn't do it. His hand clenched in the air until it became a clenched fist at his side. I looked away, frustrated by the situation, frustrated by everything. I can send all this to hell, Noah, I can, in fact I want to, right now. Bury my fingers in your hair and kiss you until I'm breathless, so one word. Yours is enough for me to do it. I bit my lip knowing he would. If she asked him, if she told him how hard she was going to. To me tonight, how incredibly jealous she was that she had come with. Sophia, and not only that, she knew that if she asked him right now to shout from the rooftops. That we were together, I would do it and delighted. But Wool had only asked me for one thing, one night. He couldn't do it. I'm fine, I said, wishing at that moment to take a step forward and for his arms to. They surrounded me with force. I missed him, I missed our moments. Our caresses and our kisses, he missed the Nick and Noah moments, too. Weeks had been too long, and last night hadn't been enough to get us going. Up to date and fix things once and for all. I noticed my mother's gaze a few meters away. We were calling the attention, damn it, Nick caught every single glance. Nice earrings, by the way, he said with a smile that for someone who didn't. Knew could pass a sincere. Although he wasn't fooling me, you're angry, I get it, but you promised me not to. Take it away from you and I would like you to keep your promises. He pendant. The heart pendant he had given me on my 18th birthday. Birthday. He had taken it from me as a declaration of principles. I think promises have become obsolete tonight, Nick, I said, looking at him. Directly into the eyes. Things were difficult and this party had appeared in the least opportune moment. We had to solve many things, talk at length. And until we did it, the anguish he felt was not going to disappear. You have to go. Some are watching us and the last thing I want is for all of this to be useless in the end. Nothing. Nicholas glanced surreptitiously from both sides and turned his attention to me again. It will only be a few hours, then I promise you that I will dedicate myself to you in body and soul, until everything goes back to how it was before. His words stayed suspended between us for infinite seconds. Until everything goes back to the way it was before.